with faith in God to write a contract, a constitution. They created law in order to protect our liberty from tyrants and kings. After fighting a bloody revolution defending their rights, they leaned upon God before and during the revolution. They leaned upon God during the drafting of our constitution. They continued to lean upon God in the beginning years of our nation. For it is God that is the author of our rights and our liberty. As they wrote the constitution, they sought for guidance for that law. From great and devout philosophers that they cherished, the, the John Locke's, the Adam Smith's, the William Blackstone's, etc., of the world, they also looked towards biblical law as well to draft this sacred document. <clears throat> After the Constitution was completed in 1787, they then set out to pass the Bill of Rights to declare what our God given rights were and where the light ought to be drawn. I mention this brief historical fact because our rights have been and continue to be violated by our own government that has sworn to uphold the law. There are numerous accounts of one's freedom of conscience being violated. There are numerous examples of our speech being limited, such as their so-called free speech zones, or, or, or else they limit us as to how to petition to seek grievances over their wrongdoings. The, the constant threat against our right to be our wrongs is constantly being under attack. The constant regulation and taxation has crippled our rights to trade freely with one another. We con constantly have the right to be tried by a jury of our peers being violated. But not only that, we are now looked upon as guilty until proven innocent. We, we could spend all day and all night discussing the wrongs committed by the federal government, but what about our state, county, city, and even the dog catcher and other local governments that are just as guilty? What about our school boards? And yet, <laughs> adopting of common core. They're, they are all equally as bad, even though it is hard to believe as a candidate for the mayor as a candidate for the mayorship last year within the city of Provo, which is the state's third largest city, I've seen firsthand the abuses by these local governments, heretofore mentioned. The cities love to use the, the illegal term of intimate domain for their pet projects. The cities in, in the state have bought into the UN's agenda known as Agenda 21, and now are instituting it. The cities love to use the justice courts as a form of revenue generator. The cities love to utilize the utility bill as a means of tax and spend, mostly under, under the cover of darkness. Yet for years now, our own state of Utah has codified these abuses, committed by the cities upon our daily lives against our God-given rights. The state continues to pass an average of 600 new laws per year. The state has the same mindset as we must take care of everyone syndrome similar to the feds. I'd say let us have our freedom back and let us run our lives to the dictate of our own conscience. To top it off, there are those within the state leadership that has been lying, arm twisting, and backstabbing other members of the legislature to vote for one national ambiguous Constitutional Convention Hall, while claiming that the Constitution is broken and we need to fix it. My question to those certain individuals are, whose agenda? Fix it according to whose agenda? The Constitution is not broken. We have simply stopped applying it, and it's about time we start enforcing it once again. Now, what are the solutions? When regarding to the federal government, it is about time that we, as a sovereign state, to take up our rightful role as a, as a parent and start governing, meaning that it's time to teach the extremely peaceful, legal, and rightful remedy of nullification. Simply stating that a law, agency, or court opinion that is repugnant of that law, of the law, the U.S. Constitution, is now null and void within our sovereign borders of Utah. And that they, being the feds, are no longer welcome here. It is time for us to stand up by our local ele elected county sheriffs and, and to supply them the means of enforcing the Constitution within their counties for the protection of their constituencies. Even if they are forced to arrest certain 
to arrest and detain certain rogue governmental abusive agencies. While on the subject of federalism, I feel it is prudent to mention that there will come challenges as well, such as ed educating the no backbone, clueless governor, as well as figuring out a way of sustaining the needs of the state without the federal money and how to end that addiction to that money. For it is the money that the feds seem to love to dangle like a carrot in front of our faces, tempting us to take it. I personally have my ideas and would love to hear your ideas as well as to solving this awful addiction. United, we can, we can and will find a solution to this awful addiction. When it comes to the individual cities and towns, there is a lot that the state can do to restrict their wrongs as well. See, in Utah, there are two different forms of cities and counties. One is a corporation, and the other is a charter. The state has, com has the com complete control over the city and county corporations, and there are laws and or codes, and, and not so much over the city and county charters. For the reason being is that in order for the city and county to become chartered, they must draft their law their constitution, as it were, in accordance with the state and federal constitutions. Here in Utah, there is only one city and only one county that are chartered. All the rest of these city and county corporations are counties, are corporations. I feel it is about time to restrict what these city and county corporations can and cannot do, and to promote the notion of becoming chartered either by repealing such grievous code and or law, or passing code and or law that restricts what they can and cannot do to, to, to the ultimate sovereigns, we the people. Here in the state of Utah, we also have the issue of Common Core, or what such certain politicians like to call Utah Core, that has been adopted by Republicans. And it's about time that we not only push for the complete ban of this insidious take over our, uh, of our education system, but I think it's about time to ban the Agenda 21 agenda as well. <clears throat> also, compelling the vision in Utah. It's about time that we also not only fight against these ambiguous calls for one national constitutional convention, but we completely defeat their agenda once and for all. Lastly, let us not forget that the people by and large, are sick and tired of an average 600 new laws per year. And if we, <clears throat> and if we must promote 600 new year, laws per year, then let that be in the form of repeal only laws and or code. In closing, let us move forward, as our founders did, with complete and unequivocal faith in our Creator for guidance and direction. Let us move forward in this new era of restoration of principles that we once enjoyed in this nation and state. Let us move forward in, the, in this year and enforce the Constitution. Let us move forward this year, united as one, for divided we fall. We will fall. Let us go forward and win this year and declare unto the monopolist two-party system that this is our new Declaration of Independence. Yeah.